So I picked up this used rubidium atomic clock from a seller on eBay and it just arrived in the mail. So let's give it a spin, shall we? It's in pretty decent condition. It's got some scratches on the surface here and some thermal paste residue. Probably had a heat sink mounted on the top here. It's probably pulled out of some uh, old cell phone equipment, so I don't expect that uh, so I don't expect that anything's broken on the inside. It's got this board that breaks out the connections to this 10-pin ribbon cable connection. The board has some passive components and what looks like a transistor here on it. It's got a trim pot for adjusting the frequency and it connects to the main unit via this 9-pin D-sub connector and uh, a uh, a wire going into the coax connector here. Kind of looks like a hack job, but this is actually how they sell it. The reason for this trim pot is that these rubidium standards aren't inherently accurate. They need to be calibrated against a better timing source, like a cesium standard. Here's a close-up of the pinout on the label. It takes 24 volts, and it outputs a 500 millivolt RMS sine wave at 10 megahertz. You can adjust the frequency with a voltage, but that's overridden by the, uh, the trim pot on the board there. You can make some adjustments and get some information via a serial interface, but it's at TTL level, so you can't hook it up directly to a computer. But a 5 volt micro will do the job just fine. I'm using this frequency counter here. It's a cheap thing that I got for $60 from a seller in China. But from what I've heard on the internet, it's actually pretty accurate once you allow it to warm up because it's got a temperature controlled oscillator circuit. First thing I'm going to do is give it a go with this 8 megahertz crystal oscillator. So I've got the oscillator hooked up. Let's see how it goes. So far so good, but I'm going to turn up the gate time to see how it is at the lower end. So it's close, but just a little off from 8 megahertz. For most purposes, that's, pretty, uh, that's good enough though. I've also decided to test it against mains power, and uh, there's still some variation. Now it's still pretty good, and uh, some devices like alarm clocks will use mains power for timing. For testing the standard, I put together the circuit on some strip board. It's got a power connector here and an LED which is supposed to turn off when the frequency is locked. Just in case, I'm going to be monitoring the temperature from my multimeter with its thermocouple. Alright, so here we go. It's a little off from the 10 megahertz, that's to be ex expected until it establishes a lock. Looks like it's going to be drawing about 1.3 amps of current, so it's going to be dissipating a bunch of heat. It's hit 10 megahertz and the lock light is still on, but it's also drawing significantly less current, only half an amp now. The temperature is up to about 38, 39 degrees on the base heat sink, which is well within the 60 maximum. There's this part on the side here that's rather warm. The data sheet doesn't mention anything about it, but I imagine that it's touching the physics module. So I tried to figure out what the deal with the lock was, and I found someone who said that it establishes a lock momentarily, but doesn't try to re-establish once it loses it. He thinks that it has to do with the microcontroller on the inside not accounting for the aging of components, but it doesn't look like it's affected the accuracy of it very much. It's still bang on 10 megahertz. I've had it on for a while now. The heat sink on the top here is getting a little warm, but everything's still within the data sheet's temperature range.